they are from culture to culture. And that's because the way of Hashem, the way of the one and only God, the way of the Torah, it naturally develops within the context of a different culture so that the people can, so that it will suit the needs of the people so that they can glorify Hashem in the best way possible. Obviously within the, you know, within the perimeters of, of, of the law, never transgressing the law. So as I said, a Jew can go anywhere in the world and see the uniqueness of tradition, how the way that a tradition is performed is unique from culture to culture, but they'll know what it is still. They'll know what that tradition is and they'll know the meaning of it and the effect of it. So the practice of wearing a head covering and even covering the neck and even covering the face, and if you want to use Arabic terminology, which I, I really enjoy doing, the hijab, this practice, it developed as a Jewish practice within the context of Middle Eastern culture, within Hebrew culture. These traditions, while having developed within the context of that culture, had developed not simply because that was their culture, but due to the people's belief in the one and only God, Hashem. Its practice is one that predates Islam or any other movement that, one, that people often blame the Jews having adopted. People say that we got this from Muslims, that we're, that we're taking from what the Muslims do or from what uh, other religions do, when it's simply not the case. Rather, this is something that they adopted from us. Many have lost sight of this reality, including many Mizrahi and uh, Yemenite and Sephardic Jews who used to practice this, this tradition in a not so far away past. And once they moved outside their native lands or you know, to Israel or to elsewhere or went through some other kind of uh, process where they forgot about this tradition, they too take the similar position that this was something of the past, merely a cultural tradition that had nothing to do with their faith. And this is a result of the disconnection with our history, the suppression of truth, the mental colonization that we deal with, often at the hands of those who we call our brethren in faith, our fellow Jews who tell us that this is something that we should just be getting rid of. Hundreds of years of oppressive demi-laws as well are to blame because a lot of the modern reactionary mentality to these originally Jewish practices are due to people's predispositions about you know what Islam in, did to the Jews through history, which, I mean, there were periods of time where you, could, you couldn't even go outside as a Jew and shop at the marketplace Without being, without being stoned, without having to wear a certain patch to identify yourself as a Jew, similar, similarly to what you had to go through during, what Jews had to go through during the Holocaust. So it wasn't always easy, and people see things like wearing turbans, wearing uh, the hijab, and things like this. They see that as a part of that oppressive law that was put over Jews by certain periods of Muslim authority. But again, this is. This is due to emotional rhetoric, this is due to personal grievances, this is due to desire as opposed to truth. If we look, like I said, in a not long ago past, these practices were listed alongside the other commandments and still practiced within the context of this culture, within this minhag. The Rambam wrote within the Mishnah Torah that the Jewish woman should not walk in the marketplace with uncovered hair. This applies both to the unmarried and the married woman. That's the words within the Mishnah. He also writes within another place that following that the following are the actions for which a woman is considered to have violated the faith of Moses. And he lists as the very first thing going out to the marketplace with her hair uncovered. Now the Mishnah has been used within Mizrahi, Yemenite and Sephardic communities since it was first penned. The Ramban serves as an example to all Jews, all Jews, regardless of being European, Middle Eastern, uh, Sephardic, anything else. He's one of the greatest Jewish thinkers in Jewish history, so obviously he plays a big part in all of our lives. But he has always had a special place within the development of Judaism within Sephardic, Mizrahi, and Yemenite culture. Now when we look into these communities, in that not so far away past, we find that they put these type of commandments, they put these words into a specific context. 
when we look at the evidence, when we look at the photographs, when we look even today within the culture and within the societies and the communities that have chosen to keep upon this path, and we look how they practice these commandments, how they apply these words of wisdom, then the idea that this was merely a cultural tradition having nothing to do with religion is proven to be false. What we dismiss as mere cultural practice, as oppressive Muslim standard of modesty, was in fact, as it has always been understood as, adhering to the commandment of modesty within the context of original Judaism that spread throughout the region, but for some reason did not take off in the same way within the European continent in some regard. And the concept of modesty for men is no different. I mean, we often talk about women and women's issues when it comes to this issue, mainly because that's what most people make it about. Very rarely do we talk about the oppressive standards of modesty for men. You don't hear a lot of causes taken up for men to stop being forced to wear turbans and robes and things like that. Often the issue is made about women being forced to cover which is wrong by the way I mean if a woman is being forced to adhere to these traditions that is wrong we we follow this way of life for for God for Hashem we don't do it for man and, and if a woman is having to do it because that's what her father or her husband or her brothers or whatever if that's what they for, are forcing to her and that's what she's only doing it for them then then that's just wrong and I don't see how anyone would justify that, and I don't think anyone would, hopefully. But this, so we talk about it, it fo focusing on women primarily because that's primarily what is often the issue here when we get into this discussion. So anyways, let's, I'm just rambling at this point. What exactly is my point? Many believe at this point that I'm probably pulling a juhabi here trying to lecture my Jewish sisters on how they need to dress and how they need to act a certain way and you need to do this and if you don't then you're going to have you know this ridiculous concept like that the honest truth is with the case of most debates and fought over issues I really don't care what people do this is just me I really don't have a concern for what people choose to do or not to do what a woman chooses to do what she wears what she says how she acts it's not for myself or really any other man to say what she should or should not do. I mean, that's her choice. She's going to do it. Even if I sit there screaming at her on the street to cover, she's not going to do it, most likely. I mean, and that's obviously within the context of non-paternal relationships, which means if your father and, and, and your family are advising you, then you should listen to them, hear them out at least. Rather, what my point is, my conclusion, is simply don't dismiss things. Don't berate things. Don't attack tradition just because you have a personal grievance because somebody told you something and you stuck on to that without researching yourself if a woman wants to wear a head covering and a neck covering and even a cover across the face a veil and she believes she's in accordance with the teachings of the sages then she's not lying nor is a woman who feels that she only has to cover her hair Judaism is big. Our history and our law is big. Our nation is big. You can't take something that big and make it that closed. Your mind is big. You can't close your mind either. That's why the whole concept of having a closed mind is ridiculous to me. We're all open-minded. But sometimes we just try to suppress it. But that's all I have to say. Hopefully the meaning of what I was trying to get across got across and if it didn't feel free to ask me and to clarify. Baruch Hashem, Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum.